Hey, my name's Tom and welcome back to Low Carb Lifestyle. Every now and then on this channel, I get a comment saying that our emissions in the UK don't matter because of China. 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 And recently I've seen this graph shared with data on countries' emissions, including ours, from a website called Our World in Data. Just look at it. We are responsible for so little. Why should we bother with reducing emissions in the UK? It's a fairly convincing argument. Let's just carry on the way we are already. High emissions. Let's not make any changes. Let's not invest. Let's not rip out gas boilers. Let's not stop driving cars. Let's just live the way we are. I mean, crap, my work life, my spare time, all these videos I spend so much time on, all of this is for nothing. Well, unless we can get the Chinese to do something. Well, I'm afraid that isn't quite true. So let's have a look at that data in a bit more detail. So here's the graph of annual emissions from the year that I was born, so 1988 to 2021. And oh my goodness, this is all at China's door. Maybe the USA should do something. And then India recently is sneaking in there. Germany, Brazil, the UK, France, we've barely got any emissions. We should just ignore it. Well, you can pretty much use data to tell whatever story you want. So let's have a look at it from a dis different perspective. If we change what we're looking at from just the UK or Germany or France and add in the European Union, a mass of people that's similar in size to, let's say, the USA, we see that maybe us Europeans do have a role to play. Or let's go the other way. If we compare the UK's emissions with countries of a similar size. So a country that's slightly bigger than us is Thailand. A country that's slightly smaller than us is Tanzania. But they're pretty much the same size as us. You start to see some context. Our emissions are higher than Thailand and much, much higher than Tanzania. So at what level should we start to take some responsibility? And maybe looking at total emissions for a whole country is a bit irrelevant. China and India are much bigger countries. The USA, a much bigger country than the UK. So we should look at the graph of emissions per person or in economists speak, emissions per capita. And the people sharing that our world and data graph did actually manage to skip over another one first. And this is a map of emissions per capita. This is just above where they would have got that graph that they've shared on Twitter. So you've got the darker red with higher emissions, the lighter, lower emissions per person per capita. And I think this tells a different story. Just look where it's really red. North America, Europe, Russia, the Middle East and Australia. So we see that those oil producing states like the UAE or Saudi Arabia are top of emissions per person. Then coal heavy places like Australia. Please don't throw another shrimp on a barbie, Sheila. And then we see places like the US and Canada and Russia with Putin's fossil fueled war. Only then do we see China quite a long way behind. And then we see the EU and eventually the UK. If we add in India, even a country like Nigeria or Tanzania, you start to see the context in emissions per person. So in the West, we have high emissions lives. In Russia and the UAE and Saudi, they have high emissions lives. In China, yes, they have high emissions lives. But I would also encourage people to look at the plank in our own eye before pointing out the splinter in someone else's. And I think it would be helpful to look at some of the other graphs on the Our World in Data website for some more context. Context. First of all, cumulative emissions. If certain countries emitted first and have been emitting for a long time, surely, to some extent, responsibility lies with those countries. And what do we see in cumulative emissions? Well, a quarter of emissions come from the USA. 22% comes from the EU. 12% comes from China, yeah. And the UK itself has been responsible for an estimated 78.5 billion tonnes of CO2 emissions, which is about 4% of the total. Our little tiny island, 4% of the gases that are causing global heating around the world. 
And then there's a couple more things that we should know. First of all, since the 1980s in the UK, we've exported a lot of our manufacturing. Just have a look at the labels in the clothes that you're wearing. India, Bangladesh. What about the phone, the iPad, the laptop that you're watching on? Was it made in China? In outsourcing the manufacturing of our goods, we are outsourcing our emissions too. We don't count this in the same way, but some responsibility for the emissions in the countries that we buy goods from should come back to us. And this also includes all that low carbon technology that we are reliant on to reduce our, em our emissions, much of which is manufactured and developed in China. In the West, we might have developed the internal combustion engine and the coal power station, the light bulb, all this kind of stuff, but it's places like China that are manufacturing the low carbon solution and deploying it at scale. We should say at this point in the outsourcing of a lot of what we buy, not only have we outsourced the emissions, but we've also outsourced the responsibility on who manufactures the things we buy. It would be short-sighted of me not to mention the working conditions of people working in manufacturing in countries all around the world. We should also be insisting on fair pay for people making the things we buy, on slave-free supply chains, and on good working conditions all around the world. That feels like a whole other video, but it feels important to say here as well. And finally, all this international comparisons of emissions highlights the importance of one, international diplomacy, two, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, and then three, more broadly, the whole COP process. We are reliant on each other to respond to this climate crisis. We need China to reduce emissions as much as we need the USA and Russia and our European neighbours and everyone else. And in setting our net zero target back in 2019, the UK led the way in a lot of this. In hosting COP in Glasgow, we set the pace for what could be done and ask for more from the high emissions countries. We do this from a place of power when we're taking account of our own emissions. So I think that we, the UK, should be doing something about our emissions. Yes, we're small in the grand scheme of things, but per person, we're still up there. And we have a meaningful responsibility for causing the crisis in the first place. We have a leadership role to play on the global scale and every tonne of CO2 counts in, pre in preventing catastrophic climate change. So I'm not gonna stop working to reduce emissions in my day job. I'm not gonna stop asking for more of our government in, in my campaigning. And I hope that the government don't stop leading on an international stage. And, and also, I'm not going to stop trying to help others see the path they could take through places like this YouTube, YouTube channel. I hope that's helpful. I hope it's a challenge. I hope it's interesting. But please do let me know what you think.